Hallelujah. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. We bless the Lord for you and for the opportunity to gather unto the Lord this morning to receive from Him direction as He's been blessing us for the past several days. We've been studying Cost 307, the fivefold apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers based on exposition of a Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 and then all to 16 and the Lord has been expanding it and we've seen him you know, expand for us the office of apostle the office of prophet the office of evangelist and now we've been discussing the office of a pastor we've done three lessons so far and today we go to the fourth lesson which is growth in grace let's pray Father in heaven, just have your way and glorify Yeshua HaMashiach. Even as you teach us your word by your spirit, grant us understanding. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, growth in grace is imperative because pastors are first and foremost believers. They are saints, redeemed by the blood, by the grace of Yeshua. Outside his grace, a pastor has nothing. To boast on nothing to stand in outside the enabling power of holy spirit there's nothing that the pastoral office and what peter said to believers everywhere he says to pastors also second peter three eighteen. but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord and savior yeshua hamashiach to him be glory forever amen and so what is the grand key for growth in grace what are the means of growth in grace? The grand key for growth in grace, which leads to an overcoming and fulfilling pastoral ministry, is a sanctified heart which has been freed of the stifling effects of the old man and when crucified with Yeshua Jesus. And that's the reason why these developments should take place in the heart of every pastor because of the quantum of assignment, the quality of assignment, because of the sensitivity of the assignment, going to you know, connect with people at that heart level. Number one, every pastor should experience instantaneous and ongoing sanctification of heart. It is important that we do not make it a historic affair. I was born again, so so and so ye, sanctify so so and ye, filled with Holy Spirit, so so and so ye. The question is, what of now? What of now? Brothers and sisters, the heart is made pure by the blood of Yeshua, not just in the past, but in the present and in a continuous sense. First Thessalonians 5, 23, the very Elohim of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, Elohim, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Yeshua. Then he closes with verse 24. Faithful is he who calls you. Who also would do it so sanctification leads to a deep purification and this happens when we take ourselves the pastor takes your being and lays at the altar as Romans 12 1 says and Galatians 2 20 so that when crucified with Yeshua you live yet not you living but Yeshua lives through you you are just a vessel for him to express his role as a shepherd over the flock so we don't dwell on our own strength. Number two is a mind that is renewed by the washing of the world. The mind needs to be renewed. The way we used to think, a lot of people think religiously. So they take a scripture, they hold on to one part of it and cling to that. But when the mind renews, when the mind is renewed by the world, we begin to have the mind of Yeshua. And so Romans 12, 2 says, and be not conformed to this world. May be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. We're renewed by the word. And that is so critical so that we can think like him. And so the word has to be used first to apply to ourselves. You know, there's a tendency of people to study the word for preaching, to study it for the other person. Every day, the pastor must give time for quiet time, devotion, there must be time to intercede for the flock and for those the Lord commits to you. But there is also a basic time to pray for yourself. What is the state of your soul? Is it filled with bitterness, offense, malice, anger, wrath, all those things? Then it's terrible. So it is important that the pastor must take the facility of the word 
Ano. Allow Holy Spirit to use the word to renew the mind so that you can begin to have the mind of Yeshua, think like him, and the way we think will affect the way we live because the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's eat and drink, said he, but his heart is not with thee. It is so important. Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3 talks about the effect of a renewed mind. Colossians 3, 16 talks about the word of Yeshua dwelling richly in us in all wisdom. 2 Timothy 2, 15 talks about studying to show ourselves approved unto Elohim, the workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if the pastor's mind is renewed, it will be, it will come into, into alignment with Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, what are things of good report? If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, it's so important. The mind of the pastor needs to be renewed. Otherwise, you don't know when you begin to look at God's people, begin to hate them in your heart, begin to, you know, be, begin to do things the way you want and the world doesn't rule your life. That is so important. So, pastors must emulate Ezra. In Ezra 7.10, for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach the same Israel statutes and judgments. We seek it first for ourselves. Number three, the right attitude. If you have the right attitude, you're going to grow. If Holy Spirit does, does a work in the heart, does a work in the mind, it will lead to a right attitude of life. And that attitude is so important. The attitude of joy for a pastoral ministry, the attitude of having this abounding optimism about people, about tomorrow, about the work of the Lord. You know, we're told in First Thessalonians 5, 16, rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. He said, be careful for nothing in Philippians 4, 6, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So an attitude of joy, of thanksgiving, of coming to a place where we, you know that you know as a pastor that all things will work together for your good. Therefore, it doesn't matter what you meet. You meet rejection. People reject you. People hate you. People do all kinds of things towards you. You know the Lord will sort it out in good time. He will sort it out. It may not look like, but so it will do. Why? The Lord wants us to come to the place where we agree with Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 that the joy of the Lord is the strength of the one who is serving him. And Isaiah 12, 3 says, With joy you shall draw from the wells of salvation. Number four, means of growing in grace is understanding of human nature. The pastor often knows what was written in Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So as you are leading people, you know what? There may be one thing on the face, on the outside, one thing in the heart. If you allow what you think about what they think to rule your life, you get bitter, angry, offended. You'll be unable to minister to them. Leave it to the Lord. Leave it to Him. Go and do what the Lord asks you to do. Just love. Love. Care for. Nurture. Once you understand the human nature, you're not going to be too bothered about things. But listen. We hear so many things about what people said in our back, or this, or that, or that. But you know one thing that the Lord taught us? Our job is to just go and love. That's what it is all about. If you keep bothering about what people are thinking and what other, you will just be unable to function. You close your own door. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit can take care of all things. He who called you is faithful. Yeshua said in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so what you go through is also part of the process of your perfection. Whatever the Lord allows you to go through, rejection, evil speaking, it's all part. It's going to work together for your good. Now let's look at the issue of stages of growth. The starting point is that somebody who is called to ministry starts as a baby pastor, may be insecure, may need validation and affirmation. 
There may be weaknesses of different types, moral weaknesses, financial weaknesses, all kinds of things. There may be issues in the life. There may be insecurities. But we don't throw away the baby with the bath water. If you do, that life, that ministry, that mandate will be snuffed out. So they may just need people, elders, who take them under their wings as mentors and guidance and speak into their life, pray for them, you know, give them counsel, correct them in love and all that. Just come alongside with them and let them know that they are called of the Lord. And the Lord is his plan. That's what happened to Timothy. Timothy, Paul came alongside him. If you check Timothy, Paul dealt with issues in his life. He told him, the Lord has not given us spirit of fear, but a power of love, a sound mind. He told him, stare up the gates that are in you. He told him, don't be timid. Men and brethren, Paul showed us an example of what can happen to younger ministers. Then you grow on to become a maturing pastor. You are not yet there, but you are maturing, you are growing. With the right support from mentors, you know, the baby pastor grows in confidence to be maturing, and then the words become more profound, and those who hear begin to receive something from them, and when the pastor begins to receive affirmation and love, and people share testimonies of the effect of your ministry upon them, the effect of the sermon, it gives them confidence to go ahead. And there comes a time, the third level, the matured pastor, serving both the congregation and the community. This is where a pastor has become mature to be a model of Yeshua to the flock. You show the heart of the Father to the flock. It comes through for the dealings of Holy Spirit, two things you suffered in the process of baby and maturing. It comes through life experiences imparted by getting older biologically. It comes, number three, outcomes of ministry. The fruit of ministry, you know, begins to manifest. The pastor is growing the congregation. He's applying the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. It may not be exactly the term he uses, but that's what he's applying, empowering the flock. The people begin to live as mature sons of Elohim. You know what? There's no doubt within the congregation that the pastor has ultimately matured to be an elder indeed. People can just feel comfortable and share their heart, share their challenges, share their issues with a pastor. And you know what? Another thing that happens is then people begin to reciprocate the love of the pastor. They begin to reciprocate in different ways. And when they begin to do that and reciprocate, love the pastor back, bless the pastor, provide his needs, like what is said in the book of Galatians 6, 6 and 1 Timothy 5, 17 and 18, it strengthens the pastor and is consistent with what the Lord has provided. The Lord has provided that congregations have some things they owe the pastor. That once called, gifted and commissioned, pastors are under shepherds of Yeshua. So the principle is very clear. If you receive them, is Yeshua you received. You reject them, is Yeshua you rejected. And as they grow, the Lord does not evaluate them the way the world evaluates. This is where the problem that the neoplastic cross is doing is that in making pastors to seek for the wrong metrics. What wristwatch you are wearing, how expensive, what kind of shoe, what kind of dress, what kind of house, what kind of car, what kind of toys do you have? That's not the way the Lord evaluates his pastors. First Timothy 4.12, Paul told Timothy by the Spirit, let no man despise your youth, but be that an example to the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Those are the things the pastor is supposed to grow in. Check them out in word, conversation, lifestyle, charity, spirit, faith, purity. These six things, the pastor growing in them, that's the way the Lord wants it to be. So, the pastor needs to be discerned. If you have a pastor in your life, discern the pastor. And remember Matthew 10, 40 to 42. If you reject them, you're rejecting Yeshua. You receive them as him. So what happens? This way it says in Galatians 6, 6, for instance, let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. 
If you have a pastor the Lord is using to build you up, be a blessing to that pastor. With your finances, with your substances, what you can do. And in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, 17, it says, Let the elders that rule well, if the pastor is doing well as a pastor, be counted worthy of double honor especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture said, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his hire. So it is the duty of the believers, the pastor spends time to pray for you, intercede for you, wage spiritual warfare on your behalf, you know, receive the word in prayer, feed you with the word, the word beats up your faith, and you go and receive and possess your possessions. The Lord said from the possessions, set apart some for the one who is in his presence traveling your behalf. It's a spiritual principle. Galatians 6, 6, 1 Timothy 5, 17 to 18, and other extant scriptures in Paul's epistle to the Colossians, I mean to the Corinthians and elsewhere. And listen, brothers and sisters, there are a lot of people who have been confused because of the way we live. And then they are not being a blessing to their pastors. Listen to this. You'll be making a mistake. Your pastor, take care of your pastor. Make sure that now, like we're winter now, cold, you know, snow is everywhere. Make sure your pastor is not in the cold shivering. Make sure that your pastor's needs are taken care of. Some people think, you know, they, they, they say, well, you know, they have it all. No, that's a mistake. Even if your pastor is walking, it's not too big a deal for you to buy a handkerchief and send to your pastor to wipe his face and say, Pastor, I'm bl so blessed with your sermons. It's not too big for you to find a way to be a blessing to your pastor. You know, some people, uh, you know, they, 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 they think, oh, oh, he got it. You can't be mistaken. You know what? This morning the Lord will just remind me the, the amusement. Some brother think, oh, they got it all. Hey, all these people, they are ministering to worldwide? No, it's not so. In the whole of the United States is a handful of people who remember we are human beings. In the whole of the UK, a handful of people, very small, tiny, is embarrassing to talk about. And so, why? Because the Lord has required us to leave all on the altar and look up to him and look up to him so don't because of that you know you think oh uh, well you know then you ignore your own pastor no don't don't ignore anybody the law uses to be a blessing to you uses to feed you in any way anybody who adds value to your life spiritually you owe the person a duty to be aligned with the process of taking care of their material needs and of course respect your pastor and one thing the lord wants you to know to do your pastor the bible says in first timothy 5 19 against an elder receive not an accusation but before two or three witnesses don't ever allow those who are given to running their mouth to come and speak evil of your own pastor you do that, you are puncturing the covering over your head. The rain will beat you. Don't do it biblically. Somebody wants to tell you something about your pastor, say, please hold on there. You invite Sister Agnes, you invite Brother John to come and be witnesses to what you are saying. And if someone says, no, 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 it's you I want to talk to, not, don't receive it. Close your ear to such people. It's a spiritual principle. It will bless your life to understand this principle and walk by it. Because there's something Satan is using. He's just using people to lay accusations against pastors and overseers. And the brethren are no longer receiving. Because when you speak evil of your leader, you can't receive from that leader again. And the Lord wants us to know. Uh, take care of the people the Lord has given to you. Respect them, honor them. It shall be well with you. And we come to the end of this teaching today and we'll have one more lesson in the office of pastor and that will be that for this very cause. I mean, then we go on to the office of teacher. So will you share this video and encourage the brethren who are within your loop of influence who are called to be office of pastor to understand what this office is all about. By way of assignment, number one, please discover the, discuss the four dimensions or aspects of growth in grace that pastors need to undergo. What are they? Two, discuss the grand key and means of growing in grace. Three, what are the stages of growth that pastors go through? 
and then four what the congregations owe their pastors with this we come to the end of this teaching today and we let's pray father in heaven we pray that you bless everyone with understanding let your people receive your word and let your word bear fruit let it multiply grace to your people that all honor and glory be ascribed to you in yeshua's name we pray amen and amen